So NBA 2K24 is now out on PlayStation Premium and Deluxe and Xbox Game Pass. And if you're looking for the perfect video for a newcomer, a beginner, or somewhat a moderately advanced user, this is the video for you if you haven't been caught up with NBA 2K24 and the most important things that you need to know. So if you're an absolute beginner or have been away from the game for too long, I want you to go to play now go into 2KU and from there you have a menu of options for you to refresh your memory on the controls and tips, a guided tutorial or different types of practice modes. So we're going into freestyle which is basically free practice. Choose your favorite team. So for example, I'm choosing LeBron James and the Lakers. Pause your game, go into options, go into your controls and then just shuffle through the different types of controller inputs that the game offers. It's a very, very deep game with a lot of mechanics, a lot of inputs, different types of basketball strategies from offense and defense. This is the first place you want to familiarize yourself with. Now, if you want a more guided experience, I have different tutorials on all the basics which I will link in my description below. Next, I want you to go to controller settings and I want you to turn off the vibration function and trigger effect off. Now for shot timing, select shot and layups. Layup timing is so juiced this year, you have, you'll have a ton of success with layups if you use the timing option. For free throw, just use user. Now shot timing visual cue is basically how fast your shot release is. Push, in my opinion, is the most natural. It's the normal visual cue setting but you also have different timings based on which setting you're most comfortable with. So you have release, which is a late release, jump, which is very early, and set point, which is early. So to give you a visual indication of what this looks like, this is jump right here. The second jump shot right here is set point. The third is push, which you will see there are different optimal points of jump shot release. And the last one is release, which is the latest release out of all of them. Next, you want to take a look at your jump shot meter and layup meter. If you're a beginner, you might want to have that on. But in my opinion, you should turn it off because there's a significant boost in your success rate if you turn it off. Just be familiar with your different jump shot and layup timings and you will get as much up to a 20% boost to your shot success as a result. Trust me, once you turn that shot meter and layup meter off, you won't even know why you had it on in the first place. It just feels more natural. Now, for the rest of the settings, I recommend you keep it on the default setting. But if you want me to go into more detail in these advanced settings, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, next I'm going to teach you how to properly speed boost because bursting out of your different dribble moves and different triple threat attacks is what's going to give you success. So take a look at this example right here when I initiate a tween crossover into a speed boost launch going right. So I tap the right stick to the left and then I immediately hold the left stick to the right while holding turbo. Simple, right? It's different dribble styles which will give you different types of speed boost. Take a look at this right here. By holding the left stick in a different direction, the second speed boost was actually much slower. Take a look at this. I hold the left stick up left instead of to the left. And do you see that wind up right there? That's a slower speed boost that's going to get you into trouble. One guy with a great speed boost is Kyrie Irving and this is linked to his dribble style. So basically for Kyrie, after any crossover, you want to hold the left stick up and to the left towards the same direction of your crossover because Kyrie's same side speed boost is the best in the game. You can also combo your speed boosts out of escape dribbles, which is done by holding R2 and initiating any right stick crossover. And if this is too much for you, I've got a detailed dribble tutorial and a speed boost tutorial that will go you through the basics. So it will discuss the dribble style push crosses, your escape dribble speed boosts and in my opinion one of the most underrated speed boosts in the game which is your hesitation speed boost so to execute a hesitation dribble while holding r2 tap the right stick towards your ball hand so in this case i'm holding r2 tapping the right stick to the left and then i immediately hold the left stick to the left to speed boost out of that hesitation dribble the great thing about your hesitation speed boost is you can combo this with a lot of dribble moves that won't give you a same side speed boost. So for example, while holding R2, I tap the right stick down into the left to initiate a curry slide. I immediately tap the right stick to the left and then hold the left stick towards the same direction for that hezi speed boost. 
Next, one of the most overpowered mechanics in NBA 2K24 is the dunk meter. But if you don't know how to use it or you don't know the mechanics behind it, you will fail. So to initiate a dunk meter dunk, so to initiate a dunk with a dunk stick, you want to hold R2, hold the left stick towards the basket and flick the right stick up twice, holding the right stick on the second input and letting it go when you see that green window. Now dunk meter dunks are so effective because the green window is huge if you execute it right and you can get great contact dunk animations which absolutely disrespects your opponent. Now to understand how the dunk meter works, I want you to look at one mechanic first. Within LeBron's player indicator circle, there are three lights, one lit red and two that are lit green. The red zone is the zone which you cannot attack. You will run into your defender. But if you attack a green zone, you will get past your defender. And that's going to be important. If you drive towards the basket and are at an angle to dunk and all your indicators are lit green, go ahead and execute any right stick dunk. That's because if those shading indicators are green, you are free to drive towards the basket. Now, if you run into a red indicator in the shading zone, you will get clamped up or bump. So take a look at this sequence right here. I tried to force LeBron to dunk through Jonathan Kuminga. And look at this angle right here. Directly in front of LeBron, towards the basket, that up to the left shading indicator is lit red, denying us an angle to the basket to execute a meter dunk. So anytime you got a defender, blocking your path towards the basket indicated by the shading indicator or in this case if someone's directly in front of you you will fail you will also fail if you lose your adrenaline bars which is lost every time you get bumped on defense or you have low energy it doesn't matter how big or small your defender is take a look at the situation right here as i initiate my dunk gather the middle indicator of the shading indicator is lit red even though I have this free angle towards the basket at this point, because I initiate my dunk stick gather as Steph Curry was right in front of me, it prevented that dunk meter dunk. But take a look at these future dunks right here. If I get an angle on Jonathan Kobinga and the green light is on, go ahead. But if the red light is on, don't do it. Once you master this mechanic, you are going to be unstoppable in NBA 2K24. Okay. The next mechanic, let's go back to defense and the importance of those shading indicators. So take a look at the situation right here. I told you earlier, right? Every time you get bumped as you try to get past your defender, you will lose an adrenaline bar. The adrenaline bar is those three bars below your stamina meter. And every time you lose an adrenaline bar because your defender was able to stop you, your shot success and the green window of your shots goes down exponentially. So the key to making these types of difficult shots is to manage your stamina and make sure that your adrenaline bars are complete. Take a look at this right here. I have three lit with yellow. That means I can take some audacious shots if you have the guts to do so. So the key on defense is going to be to shade your defender and properly defend him, lead him towards your red zone so that you can stop him on defense, deplete his adrenaline bar so he becomes less of a threat to shoot. That's important on defense. You want to be able to stay in front of your defender and not give him an angle where the shading indicator is lit green. Okay, for my next tip. While dunking is cool and all, in 2K24, layups are elite, but there's two particular layups that I want you to learn. Number one you saw right there is the floater, but the second is the scoop layup. To initiate a floater while holding the left stick to the basket, pull the right stick down and release it at your release point. Now to execute a scoop layup, which is a nice evasive layup going to the left or to the right, hold the right stick to the right as you are headed towards the basket or you can also hold the right stick to the left. Now trust me guys, I have builds that do not dunk. but. I have weaponized floaters in such a way that they are as automatic if not more automatic than dunks. Take a look at this situation right here. I got four guys jumping at me. A well-timed floater is all you need, baby. Because layups are easily blocked, floaters are your counter for very aggressive blocking defenses. And scoop layups are a similar mechanic to a floater. But in this case, you're going right or to the left, avoiding defenses. Just take a look at the scoop layup, giving you a high arcing release, and it's unblockable because you evaded the defense. 
Next tip is that steals are so good in NBA 2K24, but you have to know how to use them. Every time you tap square to steal or triangle to block, you lose an adrenaline bar on defense. And every time you make a missed attempt on defense and you lose an adrenaline bar, the success of your steals will go down exponentially. So your steal attempts are a valuable resource that you want to time. And the key there is time. Time your steals perfectly by initiating contact against your defender and when they try to sneak out of the contact animation, that's when you tap square. You also want to tap square in situations where your defender is initiating a right stick dribble move. So Herb Jones right here, try to sneak out of contact by initiating a right stick crossover. I'm in position with Kawhi, just tap square and there you go. Here's another situation where I use the sideline out of bounds against Brandon Ingram. Knowing that he only has one route going to the left, I shade him to the left. Okay, now initiating contact and then I initiated a right stick steal at the right time to pick Brandon Ingram's pocket using the combination of glove and right stick ripper to initiate that steal. So how you want to avoid steals in NBA 2K24 because people will like to full court press you is to be in perfect position. Take a look at the situation right here. He doesn't get the steal because he has to reach across my body. This guy initiated contact so I countered with a left stick crossover which activates unpluckable. And here now I'm holding L2. A well aware that people are all over me. L2 is protect the ball and it will prevent the steal from happening. So there you have it guys, essential tips for beginners for NBA 2K24. So if you're new to the game because of Game Pass Ultimate or PlayStation Extra, PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium, give it a shot, give these tips a shot. I've got more detailed tutorials in my channel. I'll link them in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.